On today's podcast, we break down you aren't what you do, you're what you tolerate with a specific example and one of the most powerful, profound questions to think about and spew on, stew on, stew on to find the answer to bring everything into alignment in your life and in your business, including me owning all of my shortcomings when it comes to this from a lack of leadership to a lack of commitment to a lack of follow through and how I created the same nightmares that I'm talking about on today's podcast. And so without further ado, let's get into the episode. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Mind of George show with the most inconsistent intro to the show ever. And I just realized I'm recording a podcast for you on we aren't what we do, we're what we tolerate. And every time I hit record, I say something different, but I'm okay with it. But I want to unpack this one and I want to make this one meaty, juicy to the point because it applies to me specifically. It's been massive in breakthroughs for me as well as Ashley on my team. And and it is something that I heard from a mentor years ago, but I never really, really fully understood when he said, you aren't what you do, you're what you tolerate. And I understood it in theory. Like I understood it in my brain. I understood it logically, but I didn't understand it behaviorally in the actions that I could take every single day or how sneaky resentment was sneaking up into my day and into my life because of things that were unspoken. And and I know not only for me, but for Ashley, who's my incredible CEO, um, who you guys all know, has had profound impacts on her as well and how we've reshaped our team for the last two years. And this concept of we're not what we do, we're what we tolerate is not just applicable to our team, but it's applicable to us. And one of the things that I've said for years is that nobody has a marketing problem or a business problem. We have a relationship problem with ourself, our team, and our customers informed in that order. And what ends up happening downstream is a byproduct of what we tolerate for ourselves. And so EOS is an incredible company. And I found this article on EOS Implementer uh, by Dave Feidner. And he breaks this down at a level that I can't even explain. It's clear, it's articulate, it's to the point. And it paints the picture of it's not what we do, but it's what we tolerate. And there's a very thought-provoking question at the end that I'm going to give to you. And it's one of those questions that you might not have an answer to instantly. But as Keith Cunningham says in his book, The Road Less Stupid, you need to dedicate some thinking time. You need to be willing to explore these concepts. You need to be willing to look in the mirror, ask the questions, and give yourself the space to find the answers to change the outcomes that you're trying to achieve. And at the deepest level, when we say you aren't what you do, but you're what we're tolerating, it comes down to values or principles, right? It doesn't come down to evidence. It doesn't come down to checklists. It doesn't come down to how team meetings are run, but it comes down to the deepest level to either our standards or our values in our company, with ourselves, with our family members, with our friends, with the entrepreneurs we run with, and in every single circle. This is one of those principles that is agnostic of bucket. It's holistic across the entire board. And so I'm going to share a few parts of this article, and it'll be linked in the show notes. And it's a really short one. It's probably like 700 words or so. And from reading Dave's perspective, this is uh, massively backed by experience because I don't know Dave personally, but uh, you can tell by how he writes this, what he coaches and helps people implement that this is this is backed up by a whole lot of experience. So he says, I've had the pleasure of working with many successful good natured and pleasures groups, pleasured groups. And this was not one of those experience. I was with an investment company and they were an impressive collection of folks on paper. They were wicked smart. So Dave must be from Boston, high Bostonian, and had extremely lofty credentials. Looking at this team on paper, they were a formidable group, but something was not adding up when I met them in person. So in sessions, and this is the one that's going to tickle all of us, ourselves included, they were arrogant, pompous, and excellent at expressing their opinions and demonstrating how smart they were, but they were not speaking their truths, nor were they listening to one another. They didn't take ownership of the issues they were having. They lacked trust and confidence as a team. And quarter after quarter, they kept failing to meet their goals. To put it simply, they were struggling. After several sessions with them, I had about given up that they could ever change. COVID interrupted their cadence for about a year and they reached back out and he was extremely skeptical to come back for another session. He expected the worst, but was quite surprised and impressed by the group in front of him. Most of the leadership team had been replaced, which transformed the entire culture of the group. So throughout this session, after the break, he saw trust, ownership, healthy working relationships, ambition, and follow through. They articulated an ambition vision, an ambitious vision 
and they were building up courage amongst themselves to achieve their goal. By adjusting their team composition and ensuring they now had the right people in the right seats, the team was operating at a higher level. The lesson in all of this is you aren't what you do, you are what you tolerate. And when we allow negative behavior and obstructive traits, it pulls the team down and prevents growth. I stand in awe of where this team was and now and how successful they have become. But even with the allowing negative behavior and obstructive traits to pull the team down, internally, I have personally allowed my own negative behavior and obstructive traits, critical, self-critical thinking, self-deprecation, rumination, uh, worst case scenario thinking, um, projecting challenges that are my responsibility and putting them on Ashley and creating massive codependency, crossing the boundaries, not only of our friendship, but of our working relationship by involving her in my own emotional drama and patterns and breakdowns, not because she doesn't want to be there to support me, but my feelings are not her responsibility. And so this happens across the board, including with ourselves, and it starts at the level of ourselves. But the idea of being what you tolerate can be applied to different scenarios in all aspects of life. So for example, if you tolerate a poor attitude from your employees, if you tolerate lateness and disrespect, if you tolerate a lack of commitment, all of these things reflect back on you. And those three uh, tickle deeply for me. Um, as you can tell, because I've projected these onto my team numerous times. I've projected these onto my family numerous times because I wasn't acknowledging to myself where I was. And I was tolerating the same behaviors for myself and then expecting other people to do things differently. Like they're going to come save me. They're going to come change me. They're going to change my perspective, right? So poor attitude from our employees, what this reflected back onto myself was doomsday thinking. We got to do this and this is the only way to do it. And you guys got to figure it out. And, and all of these humbling pieces or lateness and disrespect, never intentionally disrespecting, but lateness, a thousand percent, constantly making excuses for myself. Well, I can't get it done today. We're going to have to move it. Uh, I can't handle this. And really what that boiled down to was me not prioritizing on my side, the important needle movers that affected the culture of our team, that affected their ability to do their job. And I made my emergencies their emergencies when they weren't theirs to begin with, which speaks to the lack of commitment to where I expected other people to put in more effort than I did in my vision. And not in words and not even consciously. Like I wasn't sitting here like, oh, I'm not going to do it. But I was allowing these sneaky behaviors and these back doors and these excuses and how I structured my day and how I thought about my day and my practices and the things that I'm so bullish on now that created this culture of really unsafety to where nobody felt safe, nobody felt in their power. And so when we think about this at a deep level, the exceptions that we make for ourselves, for our team, for the people in our ecosystem, the actions that we permit, and the values and goals that we do not uphold show others what they can get away with, and in turn shows how you allow yourself, your employees, and your company to be treated. And this is one of the biggest holes I see in companies. And when I, I do one-on-one -on -one consulting, when I do coaching with my clients, the first thing we go to is values. But values are not words that go on a wall. They're not things that are posted on your website. They're bumpers on a bowling alley and standards to live by. And they have to be tangible and measurable. But they have to be applied to ourselves as well. We have to follow the same rules and standards that we put into place for everybody else in order for that to be the example that is modeled. And this is where the game is won or lost. Because no matter what, as a team, even as a solo entrepreneur with one or two part-time employees or a 1099 or even in yourself, the standards that we hold ourselves to are the things that dictate our results. And I heard Ed Milet say the other day, don't measure your confidence based on your abilities, measure it based on your intent. And that's where values come in. 
values come in to keep us focused on the goal. Not that the goal is going to be achieved, but that we're going to have a standard to follow, that we're going to hold ourselves accountable to giving it our best, which creates a culture of commitment and ambition and safety that allows everybody to operate at their fullest potential. And so this concept of we're not what we do, we're what we tolerate is at the deepest level of challenging the beliefs that we have about ourselves, challenging the principles and values that we hold ourselves to as a standard, and then ensuring that we're willing to look in the mirror and ask ourselves if we're following those same values, if we're following those same standards, because that's what's going to set the tone and that's what's going to set the example. And that doesn't mean that days are easy. It doesn't matter. It mean that we don't have bad thoughts. It doesn't mean that we don't ruminate. It doesn't mean that we don't get frustrated, that we don't have tears, that we don't shed them all the time. It matters that when those things happen, we come back to our standard and not make excuses or justifications for our lack of ownership or behavior that then trickles all the way downhill and at a very deep level trickles all the way to our customers. Because they're paying us or opting in or learning from us to be the example, not to be the person who has the answers, but to be the example, just like with kids, right? I've learned through my kids that they don't listen to a word I say, but they watch everything that I do. And it's mind blowing. And it brings me to tears all the time watching Branson and my daughter emulate the actions that I've took when for years I tried, quote unquote, to be a good parent, but I was using words and not actions. And that comes down to the values and principles that we hold ourselves accountable to, to achieve the goals that we've set out to achieve. And so the question that I want to give you, the one that I want to give to you to sit with, to look at, is when you think about your own life, and you can do this in one of two buckets. You can do this in your personal bucket, right? Your relationship with yourself, your goals, your health, your fitness, your finances, your relationships. We can do this in the business bucket, your relationship with them, your team, your needle movers, your actions, the things that you're working on. But the question is this, what are you resentfully tolerating instead of actively celebrating? So what are those things that are happening every day that feel out of alignment, that don't feel good, that make you dread showing up or coming to work, that don't feel good on meetings or don't feel good in communication or don't allow you to feel like you're in the game with your team or yourself at the level that you want to be at. And this is one of those questions that deserves some attention. It deserves some time and it deserves some love. And so the question again is, what are you actively or what are you resentfully tolerating instead of actively celebrating? And only you can answer that question, right? Only you know the cadence of your team in the business bucket. Only you know how they're messaging, how you're leading meetings, how you're handling tasks and projects. Only you know the examples that I shared above of always voicing opinions, but never taking ownership. And there's nothing wrong in being aware of them. It's actually the breakthrough to be aware of them. We fail when we have the four deadly disciples get in the way. Fault, blame, guilt, and shame. And those things need to be eradicated. Because when we sit with this question and we take the time to answer this question integrously, it gives us a roadmap to bring things into integrity at the deepest level. And when you sit with this question, you're most likely going to find the areas that don't feel out of a, that don't feel in alignment, that feel like they have you knocked out of whack. And then the next question would be what standards, values, or principles could I bring into place three maximum? that I could model and live by, hold myself accountable to, and then allow the team to be held accountable to as well, or yourself to be held accountable to, or your family to be held accountable to, because those principles and standards and values are what we're going to fall back on, but they don't integrate themselves. They don't hold us accountable to following them. They give us a North Star that we say, when I operate like this, when I think like this, when I act like this, when I behave like this, this makes me feel in alignment and gets me closer to where I want to go. And these are the values or principles or standards that everybody in the ecosystem should embody or live by to be able to achieve the goals that we're setting out to achieve. And so that's what we mean when we say you aren't what you do, you're what you tolerate.
And so that's what I got for you today. Now, this rainy, rainy day in Montana, where I'm even looking at this to the lens of maybe I should have a scripted intro for this. Not scripted, but maybe I should have a pattern. Maybe I should have something consistent. And these are things that we get to reflect on. And we get to reflect on them, compare them to our values or standards, and then implement new pieces in place to be able to try to see if they get us closer to our goals. And so that's what I wanted to share today. I appreciate you. I love you. I will either see you in the next episode or you will hear me in your earballs. But either way, we're out.